request Sujata Aunty to hand over a memento to Geeta Aunty. We are also honored to have Mr. Ola Henriksen and Mrs. Silva Clayson from Sweden as our special guest to grace the occasion. He is also involved with the Global School, which is a program run by the Swedish Education Department that connects schools all over the world. Mrs. Silva Clayson is an assistant professor in the University of Gothenburg in Western Sweden. I request Mrs. Clayson to accept a small token of appreciation from our principal. It is indeed a privilege to have such eminent people from the field of storytelling with us today. I now request our chief guest, Gita Ramanujam Aunty, to say a few words. It's such a pleasure to be here at my family's because I think the connection between Sishukraha and Kataliha has been uh, something wonderful because it has started a whole new dimension of learning in education which many schools today are still unwilling to take because the encouragement for having storytelling as an integral part of education comes only when there is um, a motivation from the school management, from the parents, especially you, and from the teachers of the school. Students, of course, are always receptive to anything. So it's the adults, I think, who make a lot of difference. And with this acknowledgement and motivation from all of you, uh, today we are very proud that Katali has completed 10 years, and we have almost traveled around the world to make storytelling as an integral part and we have trained more than 49,000 people in this art. So, <laughs> folk tales uh, is something again which is on the lowest rung, I would say, of the storytelling ladder. Because if you, today it's Harry Potter, it's uh, uh, fantasy, cartoons, animations, um, which is quite good, nice, no problem at all. But if you look at uh, fantasy, fables, mystery, myths, epics, legends, um, folk tales come right in front. Because folk is something we are losing touch with. Folk are people. We don't feel the people, we don't know the nuances of the people. With every technology that is coming in, we are losing a part of ourselves. Our interaction with the child, our stories with the child, our sharing with the child. So this sharing is getting less and less and less. We are less willing to give and to share, which is the basis of all folk tales. Because folk tales itself was formed only when one person spoke to another person and said, you know what happened today? And that's how everything started. So I saw a huge impact. Oh, really? On the way, what did you do? Oh, you know, I tried running, but I didn't realize when you see an elephant, you should travel. You know, so you learn. There is a wisdom which was learned from four things. What is the swiftest? What is the wisest? Who is the richest? Puzzles, riddles that came from four things. People from the same strand of society from whom they exchange, like a shepherd and a farmer who were neighbors. Uh, can I share a one little tale? Yes. Yes? Okay. See, there was a shepherd and a farmer who were neighbors. And this farmer, he was uh, a very greedy farmer and the shepherd was a very contented shepherd. So the shepherd, every time he brought a sheep to graze, one of them would you know, go off into the, and stray into the farmer's land. And the farmer was very sharp. He would tie up the sheep and say, that's mine. Now that it's strayed into my land, it is my sheep. And the poor shepherd, he couldn't do anything to argue or to get back the sheep. And every time there ensued a dispute between the two. Now once the, it came to such a height, because this poor shepherd was hardly left to one sheep. And there was one man called Gopal who was passing by that way. And Gopal said, there's something wrong here. No cackling noise coming. You know how villagers fight. So he said, now stop, 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 stop. What is the problem? And he said, this is the problem that 
that, you know, my sheep goat, he says, it's my sheep. So Gopal said, okay, I'm going to give you a riddle and whoever, whosoever solves the best shall be awarded the, like your ISA award in those days, that was a local ISA award. So he said, we will give you the, you know, the award tomorrow evening at the same time. So both were willing to take part in this uh, little competition, I would say, quiz. He said, okay, tell me, what is the swiftest, what is the richest or who is the richest and what is the sweetest? If you can get me the answers by tomorrow evening, then we will decide who wins the, uh, who is the uh, successor. Now this farmer, uh, are like people like us today, they are having our own islands. We think we are the best because we don't explore. So the farmer said, I am not strayed away from my land and he never had a mind of his own, he was too dull. Because in those days women were more intelligent. So you see he had to go and ask his wife. So he went back and told his wife, tell me uh, the answer for these things. So wife said, of course, why should you even ask me? The swiftest is our horse. There is no other horse which is swifter than us. What is the sweetest? The honey that we get from our farm. And who is the richest? Of course us. Because we are just full of 40 gold pieces. And we are the richest. We don't even have to ask. Now the shepherd, he didn't know the answers. He was willing to explore. He wanted to find out. So he went on his way and he had a very sharp, smart dog. Probably she was <laughs> So then she said, Dad, she looked at him. She was so sensitive. She said, there's something troubling you, isn't it? And Dad said, yes. There are these two, three questions and I don't know the answers. She said, give me just about half a day by tonight I'll give you the answers. So she went all around. She looked at the stars. She looked at the trees. She looked for answers in the birth, the animals, and the little sheep around that he would take to grace. She sat under the tree, she sat near the lake, she thought about it and then she came and she said, I know the answers and I know they are the right answers too. So then he said, okay. So the next day evening they met and you know the farmer who is always very desirous and greedy was the first one to give the answers. Next was the shepherd's turn. The shepherd said, what is the swiftest? Well, it's the wind because there can't be anything swifter than the wind. And what is the sweetest? The sleep. What is more sweeter than sleep? It gives us so much of peace. And what is richer? Who is the richest? The earth. Because she gives everything that we, we do everything to it and she keeps giving and giving and giving. And we are there because she is the richest. And of course, even the farmer had no argument. He knew they were the right answers. And so, the word was taken that all the sheep be returned to the shepherd. And since you have those 40 gold pieces in your chest, why don't you just part the 20 of them? <laughs> so finally the shepherd went back, a richer man, a happier man, and a more humble man that he could learn from his little daughter who he learned from the environment. Thank you so much.
one fence. So what happens then? That's the whole thing. Okay, so I have a book because because things you don't know the order of the animals falling out of the bed. I need to show you, right? So first of all, I think you all know the song, right? Yes. We learned it in second standard. Yes. Shall we start? Yes. Ten in the bed and the little one said. And the little 
have a king on purpose? Well, someone said we have to make a competition. The bird that could fly highest to dare to fly highest up in the heaven will be king of birds. So everyone that wanted could join this competition and there was an eagle, of course, a big eagle, very proud, he thought I will fly highest. And a swallow, and a crow, and a magpie, and this little little fellow, he said, I won't be going to. Oh, you're so small, you won't even reach the top of the trees. So they uh, laughed at him. But these five birds, they set away and all the other birds standing on the ground, looking at these birds flying high up in the air. And uh, the um, crow and the magpie, they didn't go so high, but the swallow keep on flying, and the eagle, of course. But so the swallow went back, and only the eagle was flying high up in the air. He said, well, look, no other birds can fly as high as me. I am the king of the bird. And suddenly, he heard a voice. On top of his head, this little bird said, <laughs> well, I'm higher than you. Who said that? I'm higher. He's <laughs> this little, little bird on top of his head. So, that's why he won that competition. So, he's the king of the bird. And this eagle is the king of eagles in Swedish. Kunz, or king's eagle. And, uh, yes, if you look close at uh, this little bird, you will see that he has a feather crown of gold. So he really is the king of the world. Thank you.